Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Barak Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's continued support for national response efforts against COVID-19, adding that Team Bahrain has made an essential contribution to safeguarding the health of all. His Royal Highness noted that it is particularly important at the current time for everyone to follow all precautionary measures and register and receive vaccinations in a timely manner to limit the spread of the virus and its uh, mutations, especially the Delta variant. In this regard, he emphasized the Kingdom continues to closely follow global developments and virus data to inform decision making and protect the community. The Crown Prince and Prime Minister underscored the Kingdom's commitment to support various sectors affected by the global spread of the virus in line with the development goals. Then His Royal Highness extended his deepest condolences to all who have lost a loved one to COVID-19 and wished all active causes a full and a speedy recovery before thanking community members who have joined the fight against COVID-19. His Royal Highness extended and the depreciation to the National Medical Task Force for combating the coronavirus, along with frontline workers who have doubled efforts to ensure the Kingdom's community remains healthy, adding that their persistence and dedication is an inspiration for many generations to come. He underlined that Bahrain is not alone in facing challenges as a result of the virus, calling on all who call the Kingdom home to continue to work together as a national responsibility against COVID-19. His Royal Highness emphasized the impressive resolve of citizens in face of the challenges of the pandemic, noting that collective responsibility and community action continue to be the foundation of success. His Royal Highness and other senior government officials then met remotely with the President of the Supreme Council of Health and Head of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, along with a number of key team members and first responders. His Royal Highness extended His Majesty the King's appreciation for ongoing national COVID-19 mitigation efforts. His Royal Highness also exerted his gratitude for the task force and frontline workers' continued efforts to safeguard the health of all. For their part, the head and members of the task force as well as frontline workers expressed their appreciation to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness for prioritizing public health. His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, posted on his personal Instagram account pictures of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and himself during their cycling training. His Highness Sheikh Nasser comment commented on the picture, saying that His Majesty the King is the first supporter of sports in the kingdom. Earlier, His Highness Sheikh Nasser had posted a video on his account to where he was wearing the cycling uniform of Team Bahrain Victorious. His Highness asked his followers to guess who will be joining the training session. The pictures have gone viral on social media since His Highness posted them. His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, hailed the victory of Bahrain Victorious cycling team by winning first place in the fourth round of the Tour of Slovenia and the first place in the Switzerland Tour. His Highness affirmed that this victory affirms the high capabilities of cyclist Phil Bajos and cyclist Gino Mader, noting that it also comes as an extension of a series of successes and achievements that the team made in foreign participations and an affirmation of the team's position. Sheikh Nasser expressed confidence in the team's capabilities and the keenness of cyclists to achieve the best results to promote the kingdom and achieve its economic vision. His Highness also added that uh, this victory will motivate the team in its next participation and expressed a keenness to further support the team, wishing them success. 
the first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the General Sports Authority and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, held a remote meeting with the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. His Highness praised the efforts of the Minister in implementing the visions of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa in achieving further advancement for the kingdom. His Highness discussed with the Minister means of enhancing cooperation between the Ministry and the General Sports Authority and discussed several topics of common concern. His Highness also discussed a number of plans and strategies related to the authority to be implemented in order to develop the sports field in the kingdom in line with the Bahrain Economic Vision of 2030. The Chief Executive Officer of the General Sports Authority, Dr. Abdurrahman Askar, also attended the meeting. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawziya bint Abdullah Zainal, held a telephone call with the Speaker of the National Assembly of Kuwait, Marzouk Ali Al Ghanim, where they discussed a number of files and developments related to the Arab system as part of preparing for the themes that will be presented and the meeting to be held with the President of the European Parliament, David Sassoli. They also discussed the positions taken by the European Parliament regarding the human rights situation in the Arab countries. Zainal stressed that the decisions and positions that the European Parliament has consistently taken against Bahrain are far from objectivity and credibility and are characterized by double standards due to their permanent disregard for Bahrain's growing human rights progress in the field of human rights care as well as its insistence on obtaining information from parties with categorical and extremist goals aimed at undermining the kingdom which is confirmed by the absence of positive interaction with all the official invitations made by the Council of representatives to the European Parliament to visit Bahrain and closely review its human rights experience. Among the topics to be discussed during the meeting with the President of the European Parliament is ensuring Bahrain's rejection of the inaccurate and biased stances and decisions adopted by some members of the European Parliament. The Minister of Labour and the Social Development Jamil bin Mohammed Hamedan affirmed that the Ministry is closely following up on the course of constructing new social facilities according to the objectives and themes included in the Government Plan 2019-2022 to for meeting developmental needs in Bahrain's governorates. He added that work to follow up on the implementation of six new construction projects continues in cooperation and coordination with the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning to continue providing various services for all segments of society in a number of regions to provide citizens with easy access to these services. Maidan stated that constructing these projects comes to meet citizens' needs within the framework of developing the type and level of developmental services provided by the government, especially for people with disabilities and senior citizens. The Information and E-Government Authority held an engaging and productive virtual regional e-government experts workshop to provide vital input to improve e-government development indicators for the upcoming United Nations e-government survey report 2022. The workshop, organized under the patronage of the Chief Executive of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mohamed Al Qaid, brought a senior UNDSA officials, leaders of digital governments in the Arab and Gulf region, ICT experts, decision makers, academics, researchers, government officials and practitioners across the globe. The speakers and participants in the workshop praised Bahrain's effort to strengthen cooperation and exchange of experiences between Arab countries in the e-government field. al Ghad discussed major technological advancements such as 5G, cloud computing, artificial intelligence that have been implemented in many countries across the region and the manner by which ICT advancements have accelerated the diversification of the economy in many countries in the region. He also stressed that technological advancements as support to the government's efforts to address the challenges related to COVID-19. Al-Qaid highlighted the importance of reflecting the regional challenges and technological advancements and variations in the UN report. This is uh, uh, a um, country initiatives that is also very uh, uh, very well received by us because uh, I give the opportunity to go more in depth 
uh, on uh, digital transformation uh, for the GCC countries and from and 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 from the the, the Arabic uh, speaking countries. So I, I do believe that these kind of initiatives are very productive. The quality of the speakers, the quality of the panels, the quality of the intervention uh, were very high, and uh, uh, it was very very useful for 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 us. So we also uh, took notes on 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 uh, on all the very good advice and suggestions. In the Arab region, we cannot uh, speak about the same challenges facing all countries because we can uh, may easily distinguish between three clusters in the Arab region. Uh, uh, then there is the GCC, who have uh, relatively quite who are quite developed in digital development, and then we have a cluster, another cluster, which include. Uh, uh, then uh, countries like Morocco, Egypt, uh, Tunisia, Jordan, and uh, Lebanon in some cases. And then we have another cluster, which is the third one, which include the post-conflict countries and the least developed country. Then whenever we talk about country, we have to make distinction between the three category or the three clusters. Uh, but based on, uh, however, it, there are some common uh, aspects that we can speak about, uh, but which varies from one degree to another according to the cluster. And for more on this matter, we are joined over the phone by the Chief Executive of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mr. Mohammed Ali Al-Qad. Hello, Mr. Al-Qad. It's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us about how the workshop adds input to the UN E-Government Development Report 2022? Good evening. Thank you very much. Um, as we know, you know, with the directions of His uh, Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness uh, Crown Prince Prime Minister, Bahrain always ranked uh, in the past 10 or 12 years, ranked in, uh, very high in the, in the UN report. And uh, uh, recently, in the recent reports, uh, all the GCC has been, you know, uh, categorized in that, in that area. Uh, UNB is in a uh, preparatory stage for e-government development index 2022, uh, preparing for the valuations and for the uh, uh, valuation process and criteria. Bahrain has a long-standing association with UNDISA and have hosted many events supporting the facilitation of information sharing. Uh, Bahrain hosted regional government expert workshop in 2012 and also organized the study tours for developing countries to learn from the innovative uh, practices of Bahrain in the field of e-government. Also, uh, Bahrain takes pride in leading the knowledge sharing and is an active contributor to the government de development in the region. Uh, digital investments in Bahrain has uh, paved way for uh, ensuring a smooth operations of business and government uh, even in this uh, period of pandemic crisis. Uh, the digital interventions like the uh, DIY app, cloud-enabled services ensure that the business and citizens' life never come to a standstill. And uh, Bahrain, as we know, you know, through this uh, workshop, was able to provide regional considerations and expectations related to digital interventions in the Arab uh, region. Uh, and in particular in the Gulf uh, region, as well as uh, reflect the regional considerations and expectations that we uh, expect to reflect in this upcoming report. Uh, through the global digital trends, uh, learning about the global digital trends and challenges, learn from them, align our, our strategies in the region and contribute uh, to the report. Mm -hmm. And what are the needed steps to further develop e-governments in Bahrain and GCC countries? Uh, as I mentioned, you know, since the, the region is uh, ranked uh, very high, uh, so the focus in the, in the GCC countries shouldn't be on the, on the ranking itself, but on the digital transformation of, of our public uh, services in general. So as, as, a, as a region, we have to continue doing what we are doing in, the, uh, in our focus and, and to the digital transformation. Learn, of course, from the reports, from the areas of focus uh, about the uh, uh, trends, the global trends, what's going on. Uh, focus on the uh, demand side of the digital transformation more than the supply side. Align our, our national strategies and our national uh, digital transformation agenda and strategies based on that. Strengthen the cooperation and, and uh, sharing the experiences of the GCC. As we know, in the last uh, UN report, uh, the report complemented the work that's been done in, in the GCC and, and put a, a section about, about the cooperation happening in the GCC. And this is why we uh, ranked very high, 
So we have to continue in that area, focus on the global uh, trends, as I mentioned, and emerging technologies such as the cloud, AI, blockchain, IoT, robotics, 5G. Try to use uh, uh, whatever is going on uh, globally. And of course, we are a contributor to this. Uh, use those uh, digital trends into our uh, uh, national transformation of uh, not only the, the e-government services, but in, in, in all aspects of uh, and, and most of the uh, strategies in, in the government. Yes, indeed. And uh, that was the Chief Executive of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mr. Mohammed Ali Al-Qaid. Thank you very much for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,023,463 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 860,178 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. And the Ministry of Health said that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 13,968 with 2,149 recoveries, 931 registered new cases and 10 deaths. 374 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 555 are contacts of active cases and two are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the disease and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combat the coronavirus.